Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. For you are holy. Thank you, Daddy. Sensing such such rich anointing in this place. I want to stop and go into the word, but I, I sense the Holy Spirit moving. Can we just worship a little more? Can we linger a little more? Hallelujah. With the angels in heaven. Hallelujah. 
Let your glory fill this place. Let your praises fill this house. standing at the back, you should come and sit, come. Volunteers, please come and join us. <laughs> this evening I am surprised, but Jesus is not surprised. Because um, last year, was it last year? No. This year, April, I was here in Montreal preaching for an Italian church and um, Sister Rubina and her family has been helping our ministry with the video and uh, I sat with her and spoke to her and I heard that she has a small ministry among Pakistani Punjabi people. So I, as a ministry policy, uh, we make it a rule to not ask anybody for an opportunity to speak. You know, it's not that we are against people who do that. Um, it's just that we believe that God sends us. So if God doesn't choose to send us, I prefer sitting at home and praying. But I, I was so moved by her commitment, I said, look, Sister, if you can get all these people, she said, oh, there's just 10-15 people. I said, it doesn't matter. Can you get all those 10-15 people in her house and I will come and talk to them? <laughs> it, it came from a very, very pure heart. I, I wasn't expecting a meeting. I was just thinking everybody would come together for a meal, which we love a lot in the, the Asian part of the world. Um, there is no fellowship without feasting. So, so I said, maybe everybody can come and I can meet them and I can pray with them and just fellowship with them. She said, all right. And she said, is it okay? I said, listen, I, 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 don't, I don't care. It's 20. I said, if it's 200, even better. But I, I, I want to come for the ones you have. And in between, she asked, sent us an email and said, do you mind us calling other churches? I, I, I thought she was... She was. She meant asking, calling a few more other people. And uh, so this evening I come very casually walking <laughs> to talk to the 20 people. <laughs> and I just turned around and I said, who are these people here? <laughs> That's why I believe that, that I can be surprised, but Jesus can never be surprised. How many of you believe you're not here by accident? You know, I sense such strong anointing this evening, such strong anointing. There are some meetings that I go that I have to wait, linger, 
minister, speak the heart of God, keep speaking the heart of God, and somewhere down the line, people's hearts are open, and and they they start to receive him, and then the Holy Spirit begin touching people. And before you know, the place is swept by the power of God. But here I'm standing, just I'm so overwhelmed by the by by how much I feel the presence of God. I'm overwhelmed by how much is being released. Because I, 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 I don't know, there is somebody here just drawing the presence of God here into this room. So much that I had to ask pastor, how many years have you been having church in this place? Maybe some locations have, have an open heaven, you know. So I was just asking him, is, is it the place? Is it, I, are you guys, have you been here for a hundred years? <laughs> you know. But I tell you, God loves this place. God loves the people that are here tonight. Can you give the Lord some praise? So the word that, that God gave me in my heart is not theologically profound, but I promise you that, that it is right from his heart. Is that all right? I like a crowd that talks back. Is that all right? Okay, so that way I know you're not sleeping, you know. <laughs> Just in case you, you sleep and you fall and break your neck. I'm not sure if I have the Apostle Paul's anointing yet. But you know, unless somebody breaks your neck, I, I wouldn't know if I have that anointing. So, anyway, <laughs> don't try it tonight. <laughs> I want you to pay attention to the word. I want you to open your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Mark. Mujko Hindi nahi malum hai. Toda toda malum hai. Me school me Hindi me bahut fail ho gaya. और मेरे हिंदी सार मुझको बहुत मारता था, तो मैं हिंदी देखने से बहुत डरता है। Did I say good Hindi so far? Okay, that's that's all I can manage. Thank you. <laughs> I, my third language was Hindi, and uh, and my my Hindi sir was too strict, and I was the poorest in the class when it came to language. And uh, and in India, not now, but but few years ago when I was in school, it was all right to use cane in the classes. So the man, every time he saw me, he loved this cane, you know, because I always failed in the class for Hindi. So say so I grew up fearing Hindi, but uh, my our national language in India is Hindi. So all all our friends who speak Hindi, Urdu. Uh, all my neighboring friends from India, I love you. All my Pakistani friends here, Jesus loves you. Amen. The Gospel of Mark chapter 10 verse 13 to 16. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, let the children come to me, do not hinder them, for to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God, like a child, shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. You see, when I when I was asking God what I should share this evening, I had 20 Hindi-speaking Pakistani friends with me. That was what was in my mind. But the Holy Spirit was giving me a key to give them. So that key is valuable to every one of them that receives it. That key is simple, but that key is powerful. So, the scripture talks about how 
the disciples stopped children from coming to Jesus and Jesus was upset. Jesus was upset and he said, let the children come to me, do not stop them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. When it says for such, it did not mean to them belongs the kingdom of God. For such, meaning for those with such character, for those with such heart. Not necessarily does it mean that the kingdom of God belongs to those people below 12. It just means for such, for those with their heart, for them is the kingdom of God. And the next verse is more scary because it says, Truly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. So to know the things of God, Jesus is saying, we need to accept the kingdom of God like how a child accepts Jesus. You need to, it's, it's clear, it says you need to accept or receive or embrace the kingdom of God like a child. And it's very clear, it said otherwise you shall not enter it. We as adults when we grow, we try to understand God in our limited understanding. We try to define this God in, in our adult intelligence. And we make a mess out of it. But Jesus is saying, unless you embrace the kingdom of God like a child, you will not be able to understand God. I work with many people. Every time they try to define God in, in, in their limited capacity, they miss out on it. And the more they try to un have an explanation before they believe God, the more they fail. Because God cannot fit into their limited minds. He is bigger than that. And the more man tries to define God, the more man tries to understand God in his limited capacity, the more he fails simply because God is bigger than the capacity their minds have to comprehend him. Are you understanding what I'm saying? That is why when somebody tries to understand God scientifically, they fail. It doesn't make sense to them. It just doesn't make sense to them because they are trying to measure God with a smaller scale. And Jesus says, you will not enter the kingdom of God unless you embrace the kingdom of God like a child. Oh, I love this part. It says, and he took them in his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. Tonight, as we worship, I told God, I said, God, make me like a child before you. Give me a heart of a child. Because only then I will be able to understand you. I'm going to go a little more deeper. I want you to, to open your Bibles to another verse. That is the book of John, please. One of my favorite verses. My Bethel family, you will know this chapter very well. Chapter 6. The Gospel of John, chapter 6, verse 2, 3, and 4, and 5. Let's just stick with till verse 4. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on, that, on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain and there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover of the feast of the Jews was at hand. Verse 5. Lifting up his eyes and seeing that a large crowd was coming 
towards him. Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy to buy bread so that these people may eat? Wow. Wow. You know, how many of you have children here? Can you wave your hands to me? You have children? Some of you are in doubt. They're like, uh, <laughs> do you have children or not? Come on, wave your hands to me. All right, that's good. That's good. The Lord just uh, blessed us with a baby daughter. And, uh, okay. And uh, her name is Catherine Matthew. And she's just six months old. And uh, we are enjoying her. This, this stage is a, the best stage, they say. Uh, I hope that the best stage continues. And uh, <laughs> But if you have children, you will know one of their, their, their desires is to stay over with their friends. Am I right? They come to you and say, Mommy, can I stay over? Basically, they desire to linger in what they enjoy the most. You see that? They don't want it to end. You put them in a playpen. Do you have this playpen in McDonald's? And do you have do you have those stations? You go let them go, and you go shopping. Do you have that here in Canada? And and and, and have you struggled to take them out of that place? Talk to me. And they're like, okay, you, you already spent two hours there and they still want to play for some more time. Mommy, can I be here for some more time? Just five more minutes. <laughs> Just five. They, when they get involved with something, they don't limit it. They are not bothered about anything else around the world. They give their full best into what they enjoy. Here, in, in, in the verse that we just read, you, you see that as soon as they heard that Jesus was upon the mountain, people came in hundreds and thousands. They just came, they just flooding to where Jesus was. They were flooding. And you know, in fact, that was a time that the Passover was taking place. And usually for Passover, hundreds of thousands of people go to Jerusalem to celebrate with their families. It is a time when they all go towards Jerusalem. And here, when there are hundreds of thousands moving towards Jerusalem, there is a, another few thousands going up a mountain. And people are like, where are you guys going to? We're going to Jerusalem. Where are you guys going to? Why are you going the other way around? They're like, you know what? We are going to Jesus. You see, what happens in Passover is that they slay a lamb in remembrance of God bringing them out of Egypt. In that memory, that lamb that they would they would slay a lamb in the memory that, that God protected them from the angel of death that visited them as they were leaving Egypt. You see, they, hundreds of thousands of people, were faithfully celebrating their tradition, doing the same thing. But here, there was a handful of people that said, you know what? We don't want to do things because we've been doing this all year long. We don't want to celebrate something because our grandparents did it and our forefathers did it. They found new meaning and they said, we are going up the mountain to be with Jesus. And you must understand, those were the days where there was no transport. So all the traveling had to be done by, by walking for miles and hours and hours together. And they were not afraid to take the effort and the energy to climb up a mountain to be where Jesus was. And even without their knowledge, because they found Jesus, even without their knowledge, they were walking towards the perfect Lamb of God. Yeah. You see, 
I started preaching when I was seven years old. And I've been preaching every week ever since. <laughs> but early in my teenage, I began to ask questions. I said, am I preaching because my mom told me that Jesus was alive? I, I, I told myself, I said, listen, I don't want to believe in this Jesus because my mother told me that. I said, I don't want to believe in this Jesus because my church told me that. I said, I got to experience this Jesus personally. You see, when these thousands of people were climbing up the mountain, there were hundreds of thousands, a greater majority, that was going to Jerusalem. And they said, oh, pagal ho gaya. <laughs> it means the other guys have gone crazy. They've gone cuckoo in their head. Said, What's wrong with these, geese, uh, these, these people? For decades and years and generations, for Passover we go to Jerusalem. These stupid people, they are going up the mountain. People laughed at them and mocked at them. But these people had a revelation of Jesus. Are you understanding what I'm saying? If you really want to experience God, you should have the audacity, the tenacity deep down inside you that says, I don't care what my society will tell me. I don't care what my people will tell me. I don't care. I, I see some people that will come to me and say, I am a secret believer. I am a secret Christian. I tell them that. I said, there are many, many believers in Pakistan, in Africa, in the Middle East that are, are, are giving up their life because they had a revelation of Jesus. I said, you dare not be ashamed of Jesus. Come on somebody. When you experience this Jesus, it doesn't matter what people will say. It doesn't matter what the crowds will say. It doesn't matter what your society will say. It doesn't matter what your culture will say. When you know who the Lord is, what he did for you, that he died on the cross for you. You cannot keep silent. Come on somebody. You cannot help but shout a hallelujah. You cannot help but clap your hands. You cannot help but come into a room full of people yet forget who is watching you and say this is the day that the Lord because you have a revelation of who God is but the problem we have in Canada today is that we have become familiar with Jesus. You know Jesus too much. I come from a nation that has one billion gods. And God had to pick a shy Jew to come across the globe, travel 16 hours to just come and tell Canada, Canada, if you don't become like a child, you will not enter the kingdom of God. Pastor, I really don't understand when people say, oh, now that you're in Christ, there is no condemnation. But I tell you, Jesus himself said, if you don't become like a child, you will not enter the kingdom of God. You see, some people want to get away with the fact that you somehow, someday got into a tank full of water and somebody pushed you down in the name of the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Now you can live anyway and anyhow and you can get to heaven. My brother, you haven't read the Bible. Don't get me to preach now. <laughs> Are you listening to me, church? Because Jesus says, it is not enough that you just obey the word of God. You got to become like a child. And what is it to become like a child? There's 5,000 men. Now, when you say 5,000 men, that means theologians say that there was around 25,000 to 30,000 people in that place, including women and children. Can you imagine? 
25,000 plus people walking up the mountain because they have a revelation that, 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 that the Passover celebration, they've been all doing all this while. Somehow there is no life in it. And when they look at Jesus, they smell life. They sense light. And they said, you know what? Go ahead. You do your tradition. I'm just going to walk into my revelation. And the scripture says, and the scripture says, they came to Jesus. You know what? My God, this blows my mind. Are you ready to hear this? Yes. They, wh- why is there a silence in this place? Are you ready to hear this? Yes. Okay, just checking you're not sleeping. <laughs> the Bible says, they dwelled with Jesus for three days and night. They were with Jesus. 25,000 people? Really? 25,000 people? If you study the Old Testament, there would be one Enoch that walked with God. If you study the Old Testament, there would be one Moses that walked with God for 40 days and 40 nights that was with God upon the mountain. There was one man of God upon the Mount of Carmel talking to God. There would be one man of God upon the Mount of Horeb talking to God. Now here, when it came to New Testament, it wasn't one man of God upon the mountain of God. Here there is 25,000 people at the mountain at the feet of God. Woo! Do you know what that means? In the Old Testament, God would walk with one person, one individual. But in the New Testament, God says, you know what? I'm not interested in walking with one guy or one preacher or that one special evangelist that you have imported from India. (laughs) Let me rephrase. One? Okay, no, I won't. (laughs) God says, I want to walk with everybody that is interested everybody he said I'm not interested in one Moses one Enoch he said if you will come if you will walk up to the mountain if you will pay the price God says I am willing to spend time with you and you know what moves me the most it says the Bible says God spoke about the kingdom to them He would speak the kingdom of God to the disciples. And here is 25,000 people that have no idea about spirituality. And they come to God and God says, you know what? Even to you guys, I'm going to talk about the kingdom. That means there was nobody super special. He said, if you will come, I will reveal my heart to you. You may be a Hindu, you may be a Buddhist, you may be a Muslim, you may be whatever religion God says, if you will come to me, I will reveal my heart to you. All you need to do is to come to him. Many people do come. Canada, I'm so moved that that in such short notice, so many of you guys are here this evening. (laughs) I came for 20 people. I will never forget this meeting, I tell you. And here you are, because you love God. I appreciate that. May God bless that, because I can already sense the glory of God in this place. You were already blessed. You didn't hear me. I said, you're already blessed. Come on. Come on. But there's a little more God wants from you. And that is to be like a child. And what would a child do? The child would linger a little more longer. The next revival wind will come to Canada. Will come to churches. Will come to people that say God. Thank you. It's not enough that I come on a Sunday. I'm willing to pull my my time off 
and and after a wonderful morning service i'm willing to drive back into the same auditorium for an evening service and 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 i know i've got a work to do but i'm i'm willing to linger a little more longer and and and, and i know i know i know that it's all over for many people and they'll come back next sunday but there are some people that say pastor can we have a meeting on monday too and then there was a long silence in heaven <laughs> Like, brother, you're from India. You won't understand. Yeah, that's why I said you got to be like a child. You got to be like a child. We get so monotonous. We get so into a machine mode. God, you know what? Here I am Sunday. Please, please, Lord. Now that I'm, I, I've come on a Sunday service and I, I've, been, I've not missed a Sunday for the last three months, make sure you promote me. Make sure you bless me. Make sure that my son gets married to a very beautiful daughter. <laughs> Come on now, talk to me somebody. Are you listening? You know I'm telling the truth. And then, and then, and God, you know, it's been so hard. Is is there so much struggle in my house? But you see how I've been faithfully tithing. I've been faithfully giving ten percent. Now that I've been doing this, you're obliged to bless me, God. No. Come on, you missed that. I said no. <laughs> God is God whether you come here or not and you know something beautiful about God most of the time he blesses even when we are not faithful can I have a witness in here tonight if God would bless us only when we are faithful there would be nobody here blessed come on come on you know come on he blesses despite the fact they fail him a million times and he still blesses and blesses and blesses oh my god my god my god so what does God really want he says you know what I'm gonna bless you anyway but what I want from my children is that they long for me they long for me I don't know if you noticed, while the worship was going on, I began to break down crying. And I was embarrassed. I said, God, people are watching. Oh, I don't have a tissue here, Lord. Stop crying, Shai. Just stop crying. You're a strong man now. <laughs> and I was, I, was, I was trying to feel the heart of God. And I said, God, what's happening? Why am I feeling this presence? Why is such a glory in this auditorium? And the Holy Spirit told me, I desire for these people to linger a little longer. Amen. I don't know if you realize that. God was so pleased that you guys took so much efforts to come here tonight. I don't know. I don't know if you took efforts. I don't know you, how your schedule was. But the Holy Spirit told me that you guys took efforts to come here this evening. And I sensed that God was so pleased with you. Amen. God was so happy. I'm sensing the heart of God. God was so excited to see you here this evening. And then I could hear the Holy Spirit say, I wish this was every day. <laughs> I wish my children kept coming back to me. I wish it was like in the Garden of Eden. But every evening, my children would come back again and again that I fellowship with them. Now jobs have become more important than God. Money has become more important than God. Career has become more important than God. Your blessings have become more important than God. God has taken a secondary position in our lives. Tonight, if I preach nothing, if I stop right now, God would be pleased. Because God, I'm sharing you the heart of God. He desires to linger a little longer with you. Give me a heart of a child. 
where I'm no more worried about tomorrow, where I'm no more worried about making money, no more worried about the anxieties of my life, no more bothered about tomorrow, no more bothered about anything else, but give me a heart that says, God, I want to make you smile. Will there be any man or woman in Montreal that God will look down and say, I am proud of him? Will there be any woman in Montreal where God will look down and say, I am proud of her? She is my child. She is a lover of God. She is not here to just be blessed, but she is here because she loves me. Do you remember those days when you got saved? Do you remember those days when you just got baptized? Pastor said the meeting was at 7. You would land here at 6 o'clock and wonder why nobody came. Where's everybody, Pastor? Oh, you're early, sister. You're, you're here. And today, Pastor says the meeting is at 7. You'll drag yourself by 8. Okay, just, 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 just act like you don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you're doing fine. You're doing fine. Do you remember those days when the worship started? You were the loudest, you made the loudest noise, you clapped the hardest. The worship leader hated you because you couldn't clap in rhythm. <laughs> Do you remember the, day, the days where, where people would, would slightly calm you down? Calm you down. It's alright, sister. It's alright. It's alright. Calm you down because you were so excited to worship God. Come on, somebody. Amen. Who am I talking to right now? Do you remember those days? Do you remember those days that when pastor stopped in time, you thought it could go a little longer? And now when pastor stops in time, you think it's late. <laughs> Give us a heart of a child. You know, most of you who have kids there right behind, even when you're ready to go, your children are not ready to go because they want to play a little longer. God is looking for his children that will come back to him and say, Lord, I want to dance in your presence a little longer. I want to worship you a little longer. I want to love you a little longer. Come on, is anybody hearing the heart of God tonight? Another quality of a child. <laughs> My baby is just six months old. I observe her every single day. Her name is Catherine. Did I tell you that already? Yeah, I might say it for a couple more times. You should, you should Google her, Catherine. She's already famous. I made a website for her. Isn't it amazing if we celebrate our children so much, how much more God celebrates us? Do, do you understand that? And, 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 and I would watch her closely every single day. I would, I, when I'm traveling for meetings, I would call my wife and say, oh, so does Catherine miss me? <laughs> <laughs> and she's three months old and I'm asking if she's missing me. And then and, 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 and my wife would try to do FaceTime with her and, and, and she would look at me like, like who are you, right? And I, I, I would tell my wife, I, I said, I'm, I'm so hurt. <laughs> so my wife the other day said, I don't know what's going to happen on, on the day she gets married. I said, don't you remind me that day. <laughs> I said, there's, there's going to be happening rapture before that day. Jesus is coming back. <laughs> and I observe her so closely. I watch her every single day. I, I want to see the, every change that happens to her. And I keep, my, my wife and daughter couldn't join us this time. So I keep pestering her. I said, can you send some pictures of you both, please? Thank you. <laughs> and, and, and one day... When I came back, 
I saw something. She just, just, just turned six months. And when I came back, I saw something that I had not noticed for six months. Six months. I, every time I come back home, I barely saw any reaction. But one day, I opened the door. My baby saw my face. And she looked at me. And she did this. <laughs> Oh my God, I felt the anointing right there. <laughs> I threw my luggage, I ran and I grabbed them both. <laughs> I wanted my baby to recognize me. I wanted my baby to run into my arms. I wanted my baby to celebrate me. Do you know? That your father in heaven longs for you to recognize him. So many times God is with us throughout the day. And we don't even say hello to him. The whole day Jesus is walking with you. And you don't even recognize that. And the only time you say hello to him is just before you bless the supper. <laughs> and early in the morning we wake up and say, oh Jesus, please come with me. We're basically saying, be my bodyguard. <laughs> oh Jesus, I'm going shopping. Please help me get some good clothes. You're basically saying, be my shopping assistant. Oh God, I'm going to this interview. Make sure I get this job. You, you know, we make God everything else but the Father He is. When He is longing for our intimacy. When He is longing to walk with you. <laughs> I love this part. You know, if you've been in the ministry for quite some time, you will understand. People want you to come home and pray and bless that was the same in the time of Jesus. People would come and say, Oh, my daughter is sick. Can you come home? Oh, my, my so-and-so is not well. Can you come home? <laughs> but Jesus was smart. Yeah. As soon as he saw the crowds coming, he knows somebody is going to come hold his hand and say, Can you please come home, please? So as soon as Jesus saw the crowd, what does he do? He lets go of everything, goes up on the mountain and he sits down. So before anybody calls me home, I'm seated. <laughs> Do you know what that means? He's saying, this time, I don't want to come to your house. You come to where I am. Amen. You come up the mountain. Yeah, sure, I can come home and, and heal your child and bless your, 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 your daughter and, 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 and make sure that the pimple disappears from her face. and You know, I can do all that later. But right now, it is my desire that you hear what I have to say in my heart. Is anybody listening to me? As we stand here this evening, the Lord desires to walk with you. As we stand here this evening, God desires to have a friendship with you, has a fellowship with you. You know, in fact, this is one thing that makes Jesus different from all other religions. You ask any other religion, you, you can ask a Muslim, you can ask any other person, they will dare not call God a friend. You tremble. But Jesus said, I do not call you servants. I call you my friend. He said, I don't want you all to stay down there and fear and tremble me. He said, I want you in my arms. Do you remember what, he, what Jesus did when, when the children came to him? He said, he took them in his arms and blessed them. Do you see that? This is what Jesus wants to do with you. I don't want to be the man upstairs and, and to tell you, okay, you go there, you go there, you do this, you do this, and I'll bless you. Okay, don't worry. I, I'll, I'll make sure that you don't have any accidents. And don't worry, Wednesday, I'll take care of your work. I know the boss is mad. Don't worry, I'll fix that too. <laughs> no! He wants to have a relationship with you. He wants to say, I want to talk to you just the way I talk to that evangelist from India. 
There's only three amens in this place. <laughs> I want to walk with you like I walk with your pastor. We celebrate and, 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 and at times even worship pastors that are on the platform that we forget that they and, and you have the same access to God. That is why when there is a prophet, you have loads of people that will run to the prophet to, to get them to lay hands on the head till all the hair on your head is gone. <laughs> because because you're, you believe that the prophet has an access to God that, that you don't have. But it's not true. God is sending this man from India all the way to Canada to tell you that he can talk to you just the way he's talking to any other prophets. Come on. That is why the Bible says in the end of the days I will pour out my spirit on evangelists apostles and pastors and sorry did I get it wrong I'm, I'm sorry did I get it wrong <laughs> what does it say I will pour out my spirit upon I can't hear you shouted somebody upon oh not just selected few upon all flesh hey and if I last checked it right, every one of us are struggling with our own weakness, with our own sins, with our own struggles. And Jesus looks right into your struggles, into your weakness. And this is what Jesus says. Oh, he is the high priest who is able to sympathize with your weakness. Therefore, come to the throne room of God with confidence confidence do you hear what I'm saying somebody shout confidence my god this 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 evening I was writing down a tweet and I, I, I said this every single day every single day the devil will plan to sow something into your heart something into your mind some thoughts some actions some words into your life that will steal away your confidence to go to God when you go to God, the devil will say, oh, 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 don't, don't, don't go to God because you know where your eyes went today. Okay, I'm sorry, I forgot I'm preaching to the saints today. Where are the sinners in this place? Can I have a moment with you? Is it, are, are you listening to what I'm saying? The devil comes out, oh, no, 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 no. You got angry today. God won't hear your prayer. That is why you hear people say, oh, I'm only a worm, God. Oh, I'm only a dust. You go ahead, be the worm, dust, and the cockroach. I am the son of the living God. Are you understanding what I'm saying? The devil wants you to believe that you have no access to God, but that is not true. The Lord says, I understand your struggles. I understand your weakness. I understand your frailty. Come to me with confidence. That is what Jesus means unless you become like a child. Whew. You've seen children. They can break stuff. <laughs> Do the nasty stuff. After two minutes, they'll walk around like as if they don't know what, what happened. They can come back next day and say, what happened to this vase? Excuse me, yesterday you broke it. Oh, not me, not me. <laughs> because they believe in the relationship. They know that you love them. That is why next time, moment after two minutes of you, you you disciplining them they will climb right back into your arms <laughs> uh, come on tell me ain't that right people of God ain't that right you 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 scold your little kids and 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 and, and they're like don't you do that again daddy is very mad at you okay daddy <laughs> come right back into your arms but what do we do you ask grown-up can I say messed up people Come on, let's let's face the truth today. As soon as we do something, we only know about discipline and punishment. And we say, oh God, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. And we walk away. And we walk away. We skip a Sunday. 
and another, and another cell group. And we feel like we, we're too unholy to touch this holy Bible. But the holy Bible wasn't written for the holy people, it was written for the sinners. That is why this evening God wants us to come with confidence. Listen, listen, listen to me, listen to me. God loves you 100% perfectly. No, some of you are not convinced yet. Yes, yes. Whether you be a Hindu, Muslim, Buddhist, I don't care, I don't care. Jesus loves you 100% if you are a human. The other day somebody had a problem with me because I said Jesus is not the God of Christians. They were offended with me. I said yes, I stick to my belief. Jesus is not the God of Christians, he's the God of humanity. Amen. Jesus did not die for Christians. Jesus did not come down for Christians. Jesus came for the world. He said, whosoever that believeth in me shall have everlasting life. Amen. Tonight, no matter who you are, no matter what your mess is, you can come to God with boldness. Come on somebody, with boldness, I said. Amen. With 100% confidence. You know, tonight you can stand here, close your eyes and say, Jesus. And you can know that the very second he's already heard you say Jesus. The devil would like you to believe that no, 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 you don't have, you are not worthy. But that's not true. He's already here loving you. Do you know, when I feel the love of Jesus, I was so overwhelmed. That's why I wept. I said, God, what's happening? I've preached all, all along this week. I'm, I'm going to be preaching all along this whole month. And the month after... I tell you, I've been in the ministry now 20 long years. And I know when God is pleased. And I'm afraid not to tell you if God is not pleased. I won't tell you God is pleased if I don't feel it. And I tell you this evening, God is so pleased. You know, you know, you don't have to do anything additional for Jesus to love you tonight. Hey, listen to me. Just as you are in that chair, Jesus loves you. Yeah. Yes, sister. Yeah. Yeah, can you believe that? There's not one more thing you can do to gain the love of Jesus. That's it. He loves you just as you are here tonight. He loves you just as you are in that chair. He says, I love you. All that he wants is can you linger a little longer? <laughs> Can you stay here for some more time loving me? Can you worship me like you are a child that would run to the Father? Have you noticed how formal we become when we go to the presence of God? We, we, we clap hands in a particular fashion. You know, we don't want to, we don't want to hurt a fly. <laughs> We go to God as if he is the Godfather in the Godfather movie. <laughs> if you don't know what that, you're saved. God bless you. <laughs> we go to God with all that, all those baggages. We just stand there. We're so afraid to move a muscle and a nerve because we are afraid to make God upset. He's standing in the holiness where God is looking at his children and saying, Can he just come running to me? Can he just become like a child? Do you know why God was so, so madly in love with King David? Before he became the king, he went dancing in the forest. He danced. Oh. He da my, my sister doesn't think that I dance good. She says it's not a pretty sight. But I told her, it doesn't matter. I'm going to still dance because Jesus loves my dance. <laughs> 
are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? Because when we come into the presence of God and say, God, whether you bless us or not, we are here to love you. We are here to worship you. We don't mind lifting our hands. We don't mind dancing before you. We don't bother about who is watching us because we love you. Oh God, we are grateful. Whether you bless us or not, you've already done enough. You know, that's the thing that I tell a million times. Whether God blesses or not, He's already done enough. How many of you can say amen to that? Yeah. If you don't believe Jesus loves you, just look 2,000 years back and you will see Him hanging on the cross, bleeding every drop of blood for you. He doesn't need you to bless. He doesn't need to bless you anymore. Some people come to Jesus and say, if he blesses me, I will live for him. If he, if he promotes me, I will live for him. If he heals me, I will live for him. The problem is that you're coming for the healing, not the healer. You're coming for the salvation to go to heaven, not for the savior. You're coming for the deliverance, not for the deliverer. Because Jesus did, need not do anything any more anything for you anymore because he's already done it all 2000 years ago on the cross i'm going to share this one more thing and then we're going to pray you love if you look at children they love to do something more like daddy can we come with you please mommy can i join you please you're going to the bank and your children want to come with you to the bank. I'm talking it when they are young, right? They want to tell you everywhere. They want to go with you everywhere. If you look at men of God in the Bible, they have the desire. Moses, a man who has seen the most amazing miracle signs and wonders the world has ever seen. Ever. Ever. He's seen it all. You cannot impress him anymore. <laughs> you cannot have a mega church bigger than what, is, uh, what Moses had. You cannot have a miracle ministry more than Moses had. He is, he is, he's seen top notch. Right? And then he becomes like a child. After all those 40 days of walking with God and, and, and that experience and the thunder and the lightning and, and he has seen God's power and he's seen the glory cloud and then he gets into that glory cloud and, 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 and he, he says, God, God, can I see your face? God, is it okay? I, I know I have seen more than anybody else in this world but you know, I just want to see your face. If you are a Christian that don't desire for a little more of God, then don't call yourself a Christian. Because you become a child of Jesus by having a child's heart saying, God, I'm not going to be satisfied with yesterday's testimony. I'm afraid to go with some people because they will tell me all what happened in 97. <laughs> oh brother, in 97 Jesus came to me. Uh, I'm like, brother, I already heard that three times. You're going to tell me that one more time. Can you tell me what happened last week, please? Because the Jesus that I know wants to reveal himself every single day. He doesn't want you to live on yesterday's experience. He wants to reveal himself every single day. <laughs> Anybody listening, shout a loud amen right now. Amen. Oh, the scripture says, how, how Moses longed to see the faith. You see Elijah. He goes with Elisha. Elisha says, okay, Elisha is a senior. And uh, Elijah is a senior. Elisha is a junior. Then and, and Elisha tails Elijah and Elijah says, Okay, here, stop. I gotta go. God is calling me. Stop. Stop right here. And he says, No, my Lord, I'm going to follow you. He says, Okay, come with me to the next stop and go to the next stop. I said, Okay, that's enough. Stay here. God is calling me. I gotta go. He's like, No, I'm gonna come with you again. He goes all the seven stops. He goes to the end. Till the end. 
God is looking for a generation that says, I'm going to go till I see your face. Nothing else will satisfy me. I give you this one example as Dwight comes up to minister on the keyboard. You see, Mary is the best example. She saw two angels of God in the tomb. Do you know she was the only lady who saw two angels? The only lady that saw two angels. Everybody else that got the good news, they, they had one angel. One angel that would come to deliver a message. One angel. I, I, but this is what I believe. Jesus may have whistled to the angels and said, Go down to her. She's been crying all morning. And say, yes boss. And you go and say, Whew, we are here. Now, cheer up sister. Don't worry, Jesus is alive. You know what the Bible says? She turned around. She's like, forget you guys. I'm not here for you. I'm here for Jesus. Do you see that? Come on guys, doesn't that blow you off? Because think about it, think about it. Four in the morning, you are at a tomb, in a tomb and you don't find anybody inside the tomb. And if you see two angels, won't you freak out? Maybe we should send you to a tomb at four in the morning. And we'll see how much of a believer you are. Talk to me somebody. And then the lady, is not surprised. I, I know what would happen if it was us. We would have come next Sunday, Pastor. We need the testimony time. And we go up. Ooh, I brought Peter and John to the tomb. But these fellows didn't even ask me if I wanted a, a ride back home. They left me all alone and left. But God was so merciful. He sent me two angels. <laughs> And the angels had white feathers and then blue socks and blue eyes and golden hair. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. And that sister would have gone on and on and taken the pastor's message time too, you know. But Mary said, forget it. I am not shocked. I am not surprised. Because I am in love with somebody greater. No manifestations. No healings, no miracles can take me from having my eyes on Jesus. I want Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me. You see, the Bible says when she turned around, Jesus knew it. He said, it doesn't work with her. All day she's been there. Two angels didn't work. I better manifest to her. And Jesus manifested to her. Many people give up too soon. Sometimes when you don't see Jesus manifesting, He's just checking. He's just checking whether if you will get fed up. He's just checking to see if you will give up. He's just checking to see that if, if you will be upset with God and walk away from Him. But what does, what does Mary do? What does Mary do? She remains. I'm here for the real deal. How many of you are here for the real deal? Many of them will come if there is a special evangelist that will come. Many will come if there is a special prophet. There will be many who will come if there is somebody special that will bring. But how many will come if there is no prophet? If there is no evangelist? If there is no special worship leader? Nobody. Not even your pastor. How many of you will still come and pray in your church? How many will still come and linger and say, God, revive us again. Revive us again. Montreal, God spoke to me two days ago. I was just leaving the room to go to the Revive Canada Crusades. Just as I was about to step out, the Holy Spirit told me. He said, tell them that I am going to give them the land that I swore to the fathers and I had no clue what that meant I said okay God and I came to the meetings and I told them just that 
And while I said that, I remember adding a line. I said, I don't know if there has been any promises to your fathers, but that's what God told me, so that's what I'm saying. Anybody there? Were, were you there? And this evening, Pastor Alex Lapos, give me, give me, give me a microphone, please. I want you to hear what he told me. Can you quickly summarize that for us, Pastor? Well, as you know, Montreal was founded many, many years ago, 1642 to be exact, by Maisonneuve. He came all the way from France and he founded a mission, and that's what started the city of Montreal. It was called Hochelaga. But what I didn't know only until a few years ago when I went on a tour of the city, my own city, is that Maisonneuve dedicated Montreal to the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ and that this city would be a lighthouse to the new nation Canada that was just being formed and that from Montreal Jesus Christ would be exalted across the country. That's the promise made to our forefathers. Come on, you better clap hands better than that. Hey, somebody make some noise for Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can you imagine Montreal? Can you imagine? You will be the light to Canada. I know some of you don't even want to say amen. Like, mm, I'm not so sure about the light because right now we have too many darkness all over this place. But I want to tell if the church can come back to the presence of Jesus, if they can linger a little longer, God says, I will give you the land that I promised your forefathers. I don't know why I'm saying that in your church. I don't know why I'm saying that this evening. But I just hope that there will be at least one of you that will grab that and say, God, I will pray. I will linger. I will be the child. I will lay myself down. I'm willing to kneel down. I'm willing to humble so that my city can be saved. In my heart, I kept thinking, I said, next year, we're going to do different cities. We're going to different cities in Canada. While I was on the stage, the Holy Spirit told me, come back to the city next year. Amen. I had so many reasons to tell God, Lord, but and God said, come back to the city. I don't know if you will be there with us, but I'm going to do it because God tells me to do it. Is anybody listening? I don't know if you have faith, but I have faith that God will release a great revival wind in Montreal in the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are beautiful beyond description. To marvelous, to marvelous. Forwards to wonderful for comprehension, like nothing ever seen or heard, church, like nothing ever seen or heard. Who can grasp? Who can grasp your infinite wisdom? Who can fathom the depths of your love? Who can fathom? The depths of your love, you are beautiful, you are beautiful beyond description, majesty, majesty, and through above, and I stand, I stand, I stand in of you. Sing it out, sing it out. become like a child tonight. I stand, I stand in love you. Lord, give us a heart like a child. I stand, I stand in love you. Holy God, God to always
somebody lift your voice. Let the glory of God come upon you. Let the glory of God come upon you. Lift your voice. Cry out, somebody. How great thou Cry out like a child would cry out to the Father. We need you, Jesus. my soul and sing my soul my Savior God to thee how great thou art how great thou art here I said our father is here our father is here right now he's here to bless you he's here because he loves you I want to ask you this if you are here for the first time if you're here for the first time and say brother Shaiju I don't have Jesus in my heart I want this Jesus to come into my heart no matter what religion you are from, if you say, Jesus, come into my heart, he will come into your heart now. So if you are here and if you say, Brother Shaiju, I want this Jesus to come into my heart, I want you to lift your right hand. I see your hand, sir. I see that hand. Please keep it up. I see that hand. I see that hand. I see four hands. I see five. I see six. I see seven hands. I see eight hands. I see nine hands, I see ten hands, I see eleven, I see twelve, I see thirteen hands, I see thirteen hands. Go ahead, celebrate, celebrate. All those who lifted their hands, please come down here, I want to pray for you. Come down here, I will pray for you, come, come, don't be ashamed, don't be shy, come. Ha. 
The Lord is drawing His people here tonight. Come on, lift your voices to Jesus. Worship Him. Let the body just break. Let the hearts be open. In the mighty name of Jesus, let us celebrate with heaven. Celebrate with the heaven. Celebrate with the angels of God. The heaven is rejoicing this evening. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. That is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I see, I see. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 20. I see 23 people giving their lives for Jesus. Come on, church. Celebrate right now. Yes. I want you to close your eyes right now and say this prayer with all your heart. There is no use of repeating this prayer if you don't mean this prayer with your heart. So right now, say this after me. Dear Jesus, I am a sinner. I come to you with a child's heart. I need you. I want you to forgive my sins. I want you to forgive my sin. I welcome you. I welcome you into my heart. Into my heart. And into my family. Into my family. I accept you. I accept you as my only Lord. As my only Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. Please wash away. All my sins, all my sins, and past mistakes, and past mistakes. Thank you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Come on, church, clap hands for them. I wish to hug each one of you. I saw him cry. I couldn't stop from giving him a hug. I tell you, I see, I see many of you having tears in your eyes. What I did for him is exactly what Jesus is doing for you right now. Now I have two good news for you. But I held that two good news before you came. Because I didn't want you to come because I gave you the good news. The first good news is heaven is having a party on account of you. Yeah. Seriously. The Bible says when a sinner comes to Jesus, the heaven, there is great rejoicing. Heaven is going crazy right now. There is actual party happening in heaven on behalf of you. Yes. Yes. That is good news one. Do you want to hear the second good news? This is the best part. This is the best part. Right now, right this moment, your names was written in a book in heaven. I'll tell you why that is important. When you die here, the Bible says everyone has judgment. And when you go to the, the heaven's gate, the book will be open to search for your name. And today, your name was written in that book of life. Wow! Wow! That is why I didn't tell you this before, because I didn't want you to come so that you can get your name in heaven. I wanted you to come because you wanted to live for Jesus. Isn't that wonderful? Jesus loves you. I want to, do you have those books to give them? Okay. We, we printed a book called 30 Days of Bible Basics. It's blessed hundreds of thousands of people um, across the globe. And, and we printed it into a book. And we want to give that to you as a free gift. Uh, 
I, but uh, we didn't expect. Like I said, I came for 20 people, right? <laughs> so my team has just gone to grab that, that, that book and uh, just give each a copy for you to take it back home as our gift. Okay. Wow. Come on, let's give them one more hand clap before they go back. God bless you. God bless you. Precious presence of Jesus is here. We're going to pray for healing, sir. How many of you need a healing in your body? Do you need a healing in your body? Can't hear you. Do you need a healing in your body? Please rise up to your feet. I've been standing longer. <laughs> I'm going to pray that Jesus gives you a miracle right now. So some, for some, it may be a healing miracle. For some, it may be a, a, a miracle of finance. For some, it may be a miracle for their child, for their son, for their daughter. I don't know what miracle you want from Jesus, but whatever you want, you ask Jesus. The Bible says you receive not because you ask not. And when you ask, you have to ask in confidence, without wavering, without doubt. If you ask, saying, oh, can Jesus give? You won't get it. You have to believe 100% that Jesus can give and you will get it. Yesterday there was a lady that came to a meeting. She came on leaning on a stick and she left without the stick. She was, she was walking without the cane. Yeah. There's another lady that came. She had knee problems. She couldn't go jogging anymore. She was running in that meeting. There was another... Where is my precious sister? Can you wave to white mom? Yeah, you see that, that dear sister there? She had glaucoma in her eyes. The Lord healed that sister. Yes, yes, yes. And uh, just yesterday I opened my Facebook and, and there, was, there were many testimonies saying, Brother, I am healed of this, I am healed of that. And our Jesus that we preach is alive. The last month I had somebody write us an email saying how they were healed of cancer. Their mother was healed of cancer just by praying on the phone. There was another brother who emailed me how, the, I, don't, I don't remember this man, but he says that they had come to a meeting and that the Lord had said that they're going to get a baby. But the problem was, uh, in fact he said that the God spoke that he will get a son. But the problem was that the sister had ovarian cancer in her womb and the doctor said that she cannot have a child. And here God was telling them that you're going to have a son. You know what? Not only she was healed of her ovarian cancer, they have a young boy now. Come on, give Jesus a hand clap of praise. Yes. That same Jesus is here and all you need to do is ask with confidence, ask with faith. Yesterday there was a young girl who was healed of a skin disease and that same presence of Jesus is here. You have faith, anything can be healed. You just believe, you just ask God. Don't come running to me after the service because it's not me, it's Jesus. And you have the same access. So close your eyes, Jesus is standing before you right now. Just talk to him by faith. Just talk to him by faith. Say, Dear Jesus, I believe you can heal me. You can heal me. I receive the healing. Receive the healing. That is my right. I cast out every unbelief. Every unbelief. Every doubt. Every doubt. Leave me. Leave me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I receive my blessing. Receive my blessing. I receive my miracle. Receive my I receive my promotion. I receive my promotion. I receive my breakthrough. I receive my breakthrough. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I come against every witchcraft that is coming against the children of God. Burn in Jesus' mighty name. Right now, the witchcraft is breaking in the mighty name of Jesus. Every witchcraft that was done against you, I release the fire of God upon you right now. Take it in Jesus' mighty name. Take it in Jesus' mighty name. 
I speak the hand of God upon you right now in the name of Jesus the fire from heaven is coming on your body right now in Jesus name be healed of your eyes in Jesus name be healed of your ears in Jesus name be healed oh thank you father because you promised for the name of Jesus to be glorified you will glorify your name in the name of Jesus be made whole Come on, just believe my friends. Lift your hands and receive it right now. Just say, Jesus, I receive it. Open your mouth and say, Jesus, I receive it. I can't hear you. Lift your voices and say, Jesus. Jesus, have mercy. Shout, have mercy. Jesus, have mercy. Come on, don't stop, don't stop, don't stop. Cry out right now. In the name of Jesus, every pain in your body, come out. Every sickness in your body, come out. In the mighty name of Jesus, be free. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive the healing. In the mighty name of Jesus, be made miraculously whole. In the mighty name of Jesus, I speak to the bones. Every bone in this bo in this auditorium, be made whole. Every nerve, every skin, every muscles, every organs, every tissues, every cells. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the light of God fall upon you right now. Let the light of God fall upon your muscles. Let the light of God fall upon your bones. Let the light of God fall upon your body. Let the light shine. Let there be light. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let there be light. In the name of Jesus. I pronounce you free in Jesus name. Open your mouth and shout Amen. I pronounce you healed. Shout an Amen. I pronounce you delivered. I pronounce that every jealousy has been broken in Jesus name. Shout an Amen if you believe it. I pronounce that in Jesus name witchcraft has been broken. In the name of Jesus, begin to move your body. In the name of Jesus, begin to move the pain. In the name of Jesus, begin to do things that you could not do before. In the name of Jesus, I set you free. In the name of Jesus, I cast out doubt. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Somebody give the Lord a best hand clap if you believe you're healed. Oh, make a joyful noise today. Let me hear you praise him. Let me hear you praise him. Thank you. Man. The power of God fell upon so many people right now. Some people may have felt like a heat in their body. Some people may have felt a cold wind. Some may have felt electricity. Some may have felt nothing. It doesn't matter. You, whether you feel something or not doesn't matter. You are healed because Jesus promised healing for you. I feel the power of God in this place. But the Bible also says that faith without action is dead. So you may be healed, but you won't know it till you do something that you could not do before. So quickly, wherever you are, begin to do something you could not do. If you could not see, check your eyes right now. If you could not hear, check your ears right now. If, if, if you couldn't bend, I mean stretch, stretch, move. Move your hands, move your legs. Do something that you could not do before. And then check what has happened to your body. Because when you check, you will realize that Jesus has set you free. The power of God is still flowing here. As you do it, also many people are being healed. In the name of Jesus. I know some people may have to go to the doctor to find out. But those that can find out here. How many of you feel a healing in your body? I want you to see the right hands right now. Wow. 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 Only those who are healed. 
only those who feel a healing tonight not yesterday not tomorrow right now if you feel your heal lift your right hand way high way high wow one two, oh my god six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirty four oh my god i see around 20 hands in this place all of you are healed wow can you quickly come forward i want to know what happened just just come right down come running come running come running quickly 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 just 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 come down i want to know what happened come my brother give me give me the microphone thank you thank you holy spirit thank you lord thank you jesus come brother what happened okay which feet and and it's gone how long it's been there this this brother turn around this brother could feel pain in his feet for six to seven months all the time but today the pain has left him who healed you brother who healed you thank you lord thank you lord my brother is gone let's pray god thank you in the mighty name of jesus for that healing that sickness shall not come again i give you the praise in jesus name god bless you it shall not come back go in peace go in peace yes ma'am you were healed of your knees and your arms come on turn around the sister was healed of her knees and arms by jesus give the lord some praise thank you holy spirit god bless you ma'am god bless you come come your left ears this sister had partial deafness in her left ear but right now she feels that the hearing has improved come on people let's just thank the Lord for that Lord in the mighty name of Jesus let it be completely restored and I pray that your name will be glorified in Jesus mighty name God bless you God bless you come come yes yeah, sister you don't want the mic okay Yes. Okay. 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 Where? Which part? In the back. And you feel no pain now. Can we thank the Lord? This sister carries a lot of children and she says that she's been having pain in the back and pain in the feet because of the nerve endings. But thanks Jesus, Jesus has touched her and made her whole. God bless you, Lord. Let it remain in Jesus' mighty name. God bless you, sister. God bless you. Come, sir. Come. Yes. For a long time, my ears, my right ears, I hardly don't hear very much. Okay. And tonight I receive that clearance. Wow. And your ear just opened? Yes, I am loud. I'm hearing you so loud. Wow. The, how long was this? Long. He, he, he doesn't remember. He just says many, many years. His right ear was closed, but the Holy Spirit opened ears. He can hear me loud. You said loud? Loud, 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 loud. Who healed you, sir? Jesus. Who? Jesus, Jesus hey, healed him. Come on. Shall we clap hands for Jesus? Come on. Lord, let it remain. What you, who when the sun sets free, remains free in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody shout a hallelujah. God bless you, sir. God bless you. Come, sister. Speak good English. That's all right. You want to yes. speak French? Yes, I'm I'll understand it in the spirit. Yes, I'm in two operation. Okay. Yeah, my pen and my bag. Okay. If we, I, I can't. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. and and and. I want to pray for me. You want me to pray for you, yes. Daddy? I pray you would completely heal for a healer in the mighty name of Jesus. And the church said, an "Amen." Yeah. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on. Thank you, Lord. I want to take this minute to thank the pastor for opening this place. I want to thank every single one of you that are here. And if you're on Facebook and if you're on Twitter, you can find us on SM Ministries or Shaiju Matthew, just key in. Um, and we would love to connect with you. If you will partner, we'll send you our first um, book, e-book, uh, called 
why God established David uh, that I wrote when I was 17 years old. I'd love to hear your testimonies. And I know that even after you go back, you will have more testimonies. Do you believe that? I can't hear you. Do you believe that? Okay. Here's, here's what I, 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 I request. I want you to pray for the meetings in Toronto. The same anointing that is falling here. Would you pray that God would release it in Toronto? And after the meetings in Toronto, we go to Ottawa. We finish with meetings in Ottawa in your capital. So I want you to pray for that. Would you pray for that? You know, our ministry is hosting hosting these these crusades. And 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 pastors in India, ministers in India, they would they would look at me strange. When I told them that we are doing, they're like, well, "Why do you need to do meetings in Canada? Uh, aren't they suppose aren't they coming down and, and and helping ministries in India?" I told them, "Yes, but God is telling us to go there." So some people look at me very strangely, like like you know, it wasn't very smart an idea. Uh, but I know that God is sending me for your land. I love Canada, and keep our ministry in prayers. And I I pray that. The promise of God will come to pass. I'm going to say a common prayer and believe that the power of God will fall upon everyone. Okay? Whatever you need, lift it to God. Holy Spirit, as your children go back, loving you like never before, I pray you will look down from heaven with mercy. That you would look down from heaven with special grace. Let your mercy speak for them. Let your grace locate them. Yes, God. And I pray this whole month will be a month of breakthrough. Let many testimonies be heard this month. Jobs, finance, health, miracles, the children, the family. September, I bless you to have miracles this month in the mighty name of Jesus and somebody shout an amen. amen the peace of God go back with you in Jesus mighty name and everybody shouted an amen this evening I want you to go back home with the faith that you're not going alone Jesus is going to come with you lingering with you can you believe that that is most important otherwise this evening is a waste if you go back and, and go back to your routine, we wasted our time this evening. So as you get into the car, welcome the Holy Spirit. Say, come on Holy Spirit, let's go on a ride. When you go sip your Tim Hortons, I love Tim Hortons. I tried to take it back to India, but it doesn't taste the same. They fooled me. I had three tins of it and it didn't taste the same. But I tell you, host God. Because if you host God in your life, you will host God in your church. If you host God in your city, you need to first host God in your church. If you host God in your city, then you will be able to host God in your nation. Can I hear an amen? amen. So what does that mean? It means it starts with you. Look at your neighbor and say it starts with you. Yeah, don't blame your pastor. 